Okay guys, tactics time and today we're only doing five exercises but all of them are coming from King's Indian Defense games. And by the way guys, I want to show you also the entire game for you to see the moves that led to this uh, to this position. Now, I'm going to leave this one for later. Let me actually start with this easy one. And this one is not necessarily a King's Indian Defense, but if you're a King's Indian Defense player, you should be familiar with this position type. So this is actually a little bit different because as you can see, we start like a modern defense and then knight d7, e4, a6. And yes, this is the only one that is not going to be a King's Indian defense. Okay, so bishop c4 and then here the black pieces decided to do h6. Now, without doing it on the board, imagine you're playing this position as the black pieces you are thinking of playing h6 to get the bishop out. And the question to you is, why is that such a horrible move? If we did h6, then the white pieces have a very powerful continuation. So take this one as a warm up. I know it is it is for, for white after h6 is played. So you have to imagine h6 played and you have to look at it from white's perspective, right? So again, after h6, what is that move that is going to put the white pieces in the lead. I hope that after I show you every exercise, you post the video. You guys are not new, you know how this works. And if you already post the video, you worked on it. I hope that you guys found that after h6, the white pieces could play queen b3. This is very typical in these positions. We have to be aware of it. Even though we don't play the modern defense, we play more like the King's Indian defense and the Pierce defense, where our knight would be already on, on f6. Which, by the way, here, if I'm playing this as black, I would just do not f6, right? But anyhow, if h6, the problem is, and I'm going to show you, but let's do it in our head first. The problem is queen b3, hidden f7, and there's nothing you can do. You cannot play e6 or you lose the, the, the queen. You cannot play d5, they just take. And then if you did something like h takes g5, they're going to take on f7, king moves, and knight g5. And again, there's nothing you can do now. So let me play it on the board. Queen b3, h takes g5, bishop f7, king moves, and then knight g5. Of course, I'm coming to e6. Now, if you did something like knight d to f6, opening up the, the bishop, well, I'm going to take now on g8, give me my material back. And if you simply take, I'm going to deliver checkmate on f7. So guys, this is just to warm up, but at the same time, if you're not familiar with it, you have to be alert with this powerful powerful moves so let's get to the real deal then let me show you this other position and it actually started with knight f3 knight f6 b3 and notice that we haven't gotten to the classical king's indian defense or the same ish the four point attack we're going to have some of those this one is more with the, the fianchetto on the queen side so b6 when we talked about the london system there's another exercise or another game that i want to show you today where the white pieces play the london right now when we talked about the king's indian defense versus london i told you that that's the only time when i like to do this double fianchetto but it is very common in many other variations as well so e3 bishop b7 castle d6 and then we get ready to strike the center so knight b to d7 e8 rook e8 d5 and the moment they play d5 we know c5 becomes available so we want to put the knight on c5 at some point but instead we got e6 e4 knight c5 there you go bishop takes queen takes now we're hitting a1 rook b1 and we know guys if you're a king's indian defense player you're familiar with this idea that we don't want them to kick us out so pawn to a5 is played then a3 e takes the five e file is now open but this diagonal is not so the black pieces decided to reroute the bishop so we got bishop c8 b4 pawn takes pawn takes and now it is the black pieces to move let's see if you guys can find the best continuation for the black pieces again this one is not as difficult as the other ones coming up but still we have to be alert we have to be paying attention so i hope that you post the video one more time and the best move here guys as simple as it is we can easily miss it in a real game well the move is simply knight a4 i'm threatening to get to c3 there's nothing they could do about that not only am i forking the queen and the rook but even if they moved like say rook c1 once i get to c3 I'm hitting the queen and that bishop that is also being attacked by the rooks. So yes, P3 
piece of cake. Next one, guys, is uh, another king scene in defense, of course, but this time we got a four pawn attack. And then in this game, the black pieces decided to play with c5. When we learned it, we talked about knight a6 and e5. But c5 is another way to play the king's Indian defense. So d5, e6, so e takes, e takes, rook e8, same pattern as before. We open the e-file and we put the rook there, of course. So castle, bishop e5. In the other game, different system, I know, but remember that the bishop was on b7. This time, it stayed on this diagonal, we put it on f5. So bishop d3, queen to d7, bishop takes, queen takes, queen b3, pawn to b6, knight to b5, queen has to go back to defend, and then after f5, we got knight to e4. So the white pieces are making contact, trying to attack, black pieces are doing the same thing. f takes, h takes, knight g5, a6 attacking the knight, and the white pieces decided to play an in-between move. Rook f7, then I take care of the knight. At this point, make no mistake, the white pieces are better. However, we've learned that when we are in trouble, we're already losing, we need to complicate the game. So what did the black pieces do? Well, queen g4, bringing more pieces to attack the king. Knight c7, fork, and then it is the black pieces to move, see if you can find the best continuation. And for this one, guys, really try to calculate. It's not enough to say, oh, I think this move is gonna win, let's see what happens. Try to be specific and come up with concrete calculations, okay? Now, if you pause the video, the move is, of course, bishop d4. Now, I hope that you guys considered what if they do bishop e3, you calculated the whole thing. Now, if after bishop d4, they simply hide, well, we go, we're gonna do knight f2, followed by rook e1, right? Even if they take, we're gonna go rook e1, we take and that's checkmate. If after bishop d4, they go to f1, well, we just move the knight out the way, either to g3 or to d2, and then queen e2 would be checkmate. But then what if after bishop d4, bishop e3? Now, let me do this too on the board. So check if they move or capture, that's going to be rook e1. If instead they go to f1, check whatever they take with, we're going to do checkmate. And then finally, if they do now bishop e3, we take advantage of this pin and we're going to collect the knight. So if you found this idea, if you considered everything, looked at knight g5, let me know in the comments, guys. Knight takes g5, I'm hitting the rook, so if they take here, I take on f7. If they go to c7, I go rook a7. And there's no doubt the black pieces are winning at this point in the game. Now, I know that it sounds like really difficult to consider everything, but guys, that's what we are working on. That's what we're training at this point in the course. We gotta get really good at calculating um, concrete variations. So with that said, let me go. I think we got what? We got like three more. And this one, let me show you from the beginning. This is from a same-ish variation. So D6, F3. And yes, when we talked about this variation, we said you could play the, the secret weapon, if you remember, or you could just play C6, A6, even though recently you have seen me play um, just castle, right? Which is perfectly fine as well. Now in this game, they decided to play C6, then castle, E5, D5, then C takes D5, C takes D5, and knight B to D7. So castle, queen side. And guys, from lesson 58, we started to talk about opposite side castling attack. Well, that's what this game is going to be all about. So black pieces need to be putting pressure on the queen side. White pieces need to be attacking on the king side. So a6, thematic move, king b1, b5, knight e2, and everyone knows where this knight is going, right? So queen c2, knight c4, bishop goes back to safety, queen b6, and at this point, we cannot deny the black pieces took the initiative. So there's no attack going on on the king side because my opponent is just defending and defending. So rook d3, then bishop d7, knight d1. Of course, the rook goes now to this c file, and after rook c3, it is the black pieces to move. Let's see if you guys if you guys can find the winning continuation. If you pause the video and you found it, I know, I know, simple, but again, guys, 
this is the kind of tactics that we miss in our games. Is this something that we're only going to get in the Kings Indian Defense Samage variation? No, but it could occur here. So it's good to train to train this way. So the move is, of course, knight d5, hitting that rook. If the pawn takes, then the same bishop, remember from the other games, the light square bishop is going to pin the queen and we win material. Don't forget that we also have some ideas with discovery right so if they did rook d3 for example then we could go knight a3 and check with hitting the queen as well so let me go i think we got only two more and this one is going to be actually a classical variation of the king's indian defense so i see three guys if i'm going too fast pause the video every time you get to a new position pause the video and work on it on your own so h3 e5 strike in the center bishop g5 all of you should know if you went over lesson 85 that we're not concerned about this. Bishop f6, knight d5, queen d8, and then they chopped off the bishop. Also, we had a very powerful lesson on this bishop, how we could improve it sometimes through a different diagonal, but that's a different story. And now after queen d5, knight c6, developing, queen c5, rook d8, knight d4, and after rook d1, guys, again, black pieces to move any of us could get this position in a game let's see if you can find the best continuation if you were thinking of oh why is it that the white pieces never took on e5 they didn't have the time of course we're doing a fork over here and even if they took at some point we could take with check and capture the queen on e5 but anyhow black to move what is the right continuation and please try to calculate everything now the move here guys is b6 we gotta realize the queen cannot retreat. If it goes back, we got the same fork. So after b6, they gotta take, and then the queen is almost trapped. But how do we put more pressure on it? Well, after b6, queen c7, rook d7, and that's it, the queen is trapped. So b6, queen c7, rook d7, and they have to give us the queen, okay? Now, I hope that you're ready for the last one, and this one is going to be d4, e4 same as one more time castle e5 c6 and notice how they're using the same c6 move we know it's very flexible very very thematic in all of these openings but then after bishop d3 they played b5 not sure if this is the right approach here but then after they take on b5 c takes d5 they take and now pawn to e4. Now the white pieces take with the bishop where they should have just taken with the pawn and soon after things start to get more and more complicated. So now queen h4 we've talked about this kind of move we've seen it in the four pawn attack variation but then after king f1 we guys should think immediately of opening up the file. Again complicated the game f5 is a thematic break in this opening but here it simply makes sense right. So e takes bishop takes knight f3 they have to find a way to block that file and now bishop g4 we're putting pressure on it we're pinning the knight then bishop f2 queen h5 and after bishop g3 this next move guys is not what we're looking it's not the tactic that we're looking for but again look at this kind of pressure what are my candidate moves well i gotta look at checks i gotta look at captures when it comes to captures this one comes to mind right away but what if we captured with a check if the pawn takes then we take with a fork. So queen e1, knight d7, we gotta control the back rank. Queen e6, king h8, bishop d6, and now instead of taking on h1, the black pieces bring more pieces towards that king. So knight f6, rook e8, queen has to go to f7, and right now, before you pause the video, there is a hint that I want to give you, but only if you want it. So if you don't want the hint, pause the video right now, try to work on it. If you do want the hint, this is the hint. This tactic is actually about a forced four move checkmate. So see if you can find a forced four move checkmate. And I'm telling you because ultimately I wanna see if you can, knowing that, if you can visualize the whole thing, if you can calculate. And the move here is actually, um, of course, it starts with queen h3, then king has to go to f2, otherwise we take. After the king goes to f2, we got knight g4, rook has to take, then bishop d4, rook has to take, and then the queen is going to be able to go to g2 checkmate. Don't forget that the rook is over here. And this is a nice 
uh, tactic because all, all of the pieces, all of the black pieces, they work together to deliver checkmate. So queen h3, this will be mate. Instead, we go knight g4, they have to take it. Bishop d4, rook has to take it. The rook is going around for nothing. And then checkmate on g2. So